I also saw you were wearing uh, at some point a Madonna shirt. That was another good one that I liked. Obviously, I'm a massive Madonna fan. I have three good ones, three solid Madonna shirts um, that I that I cherish. I must admit. I know she's she's definitely you. You're younger than me, but she's definitely kind of our generation. I yeah, think we, yeah, we yeah, grew yeah. Up with for her. sure. And she was extremely influential, in my, in my opinion, across a category, a spectrum of categories. So I definitely have three good ones. Also, personally for you, right? Because you, it was the Justify My Love video that sort of opened your eyes. So, okay, so this is funny. You're going to appreciate this one. Yes. So, because I was, I grew up at a time where, you know, nobody was gay. Nobody was openly gay. And it was gross to be gay. Everybody made fun of gays. You were not gay. You know, it was like the Cosby's being the only show with black people in it in the 90s. It was like there were no gay people on TV. It was, it was not. Nobody was gay. So I developed this kind of homophobia because obviously I was gay, but couldn't even wrap my head around it enough to even sort of like, is this even possible to explore it? So I'm 17 and two things occurred within pop culture at that, at that particular moment. One was basic instinct. So I don't know if you ever saw this movie. It's what launched Sharon Stone in a big yes. way. She was in like Total oh, yes. Recall or something. So she plays like Catherine Trammell, who's a gorgeous billionaire Honest. bisexual <laughs> also a murderer but nevertheless also a murderer but you know <laughs> yeah it's, it's part, part of the appeal yeah i mean she may kill you but that's all right it's definitely <laughs> she's worth she was worth dying for at the time <laughs> so she's at some nightclub and I, i'll never forget it. she has this i don't remember by the way my kids names on a good day right that's my memory is the worst i can't remember the first decade of my life. My mom's like, and then don't you remember that trip when you were eight? I'm like, I was eight? Like, I don't remember <laughs> anything. But I remember this movie. So she's dancing with her girlfriend or her lover, this girl named Roxy. And then Michael Douglas walks into the club. And long story short, she made it cool at that moment in time for women to be bisexual. And so you started to see girls like pretending to be bisexual because it was cool mm -hmm. you know friends were mm -hmm. holding hands at nightclubs so that softened it i actually think that came after justify my love because i feel like that video came out and then the book came out sex came out yes and um she released sex which was shot by steven mizell and i was like what how she's like gross and i i will never forget i had a boyfriend i was 17 and everyone's like why are you having such a strong reaction to this, Jill? And I was like, that's disgusting. I've lost so much respect for her. <laughs> oh my God. I know. It's funny, but it's not. You like, like, what is it? Tragedy plus time is comedy. Like, it was tragic. This is why cancel culture is so dangerous because you got to give a kid an opportunity to explore, you know, what is wrong. There's obviously something there. Without, like, if, if you'd gone back in time, you would have canceled me. I was a fucking homophobe, completely. You didn't even know who you were. You I didn't no even idea. know who you were. None. And so, obviously, it was my own, you know, self-loathing and fear of this that was making me this way. you got to give a kid an opportunity to discuss it and explore it without worrying they're going to get, just their life is going to be ruined and they'll get kicked out of college and all this shit. So... Anyway, the long and the short of it is I end up at a party. And then I think Basic Instinct came out and made it that much cooler. So I was at a party and um, it was right after the cops who beat the shit out of Rodney King got released. And we had curfews across Los Angeles. So people were kind of gathering in their houses. And this girl came up to me um, and a friend of mine that was trying to date this girl. Long story short, she was gay. And ended up trying to hit on me. And I was like, that's so funny because she's not, I'm not gay, but you know, that's flattering. He makes me go out with them at a later date because he's like, oh, she's not going to go unless you go, just go. I end up going and this girl ends up kissing me. 
And at that moment, I was like, oh no, no. You know, you, all of a sudden you have this feeling that you haven't had. And I, I used to think like, what's wrong with me? Like, am I frigid? Like, why, why do I not have this? Like, I love men. I think they're beautiful. I love their company. I want to cuddle with them. But the minute it would get beyond that, I would kind of just, something would stop working. I couldn't figure out what it was. I was like, there's something fucking wrong with me. Like I'm, I'm, I'm defunct. I'm broken. And I never said anything about it. I just thought like, something's not clicking. What is it? And all of a sudden this girl kisses me and you have all those feelings. Mm -hmm. And I remember, and I'm not a religious person. I don't subscribe to any kind of organized religion. I'm agnostic. I have an open mind to all of it. But I remember just saying like, God, if you exist, I do not want this. I don't want this. Please don't do this. And obviously, you know, it doesn't work that way, but it's 17. You think maybe Aww. you can have God take this from you if there is a God. And it took me years to come to terms with it. That's kind of what I mean. Like, I don't, I don't struggle with things well. I struggle with them. And then when I make it through later, I'm like, okay, <laughs> now that I'm on the other side of this, let me tell you how I handled this like a champ nap. But it was a very different time and it was a real process. And I think having... Madonna, who was such an influential, strong, powerful woman that I'd respected since I was like eight years old, make it cool and okay. Yes. Helped me not be like, well, this isn't gross anymore. And it it took some time. But here's the really funny story I'm at the gym, maybe because I just moved to Miami a couple years ago. But I switched gyms recently because they had a cold plunge and Equinox didn't. Equinox, get on your shit. What are you doing? (laughs) So I switch over to anatomy and this woman comes up to me and she looks familiar. And I'm like, I know this face. And she's like, Jillian, you're Jillian, right? I'm like, yeah, hi. And she's like, I'm Ingrid. And I was like, what, Ingrid Casares? And she's like, yeah. She's like, my partner owns this gym. And I'm like, Holy shit, that's my daughter's girlfriend. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> so she has, she's the nicest, coolest lady. Wow. Um, then we've ended up, Deshaun and I have ended up becoming friends with her, but I was like, dude, so we're at, like, my wife's like, babe, be cool. Don't, don't, you know, be cool. We're at our very first dinner. I'm like, do you have any idea how much you guys changed my life? <laughs> <laughs> like, I'll be so chill. I'll be chill. I love you and your girlfriend. Like, yeah. You crazy. <laughs> and um, she's so she's so cool and funny and sweet. But uh, yeah, I had like a full blown weirdo moment on her. How weird is that? After all these years wow. at the a gym down the street, because she's obviously from Miami. Yeah, that's so full circle. Yeah, very bizarre. Isn't that crazy, the, the, the magic of music? I mean, it really helped be the catalyst for your transformation and, and embracing who you are. 